So the Lugo police are absolutely out of control. And it's easy to tell. All you gotta do is just pick up, you know, a crime, crime times, and just look through. Just look through any crime times, uh, any week or two, and you'll see that, um, just like nationally, the Lugo police are going after the young, the old, rich. Well, not the rich, but the the poor um, uh, of all, you know, all ages, all colors, all ethnicities. They're essentially they're equal opportunity oppressors. So the LMPD, um, you know, just like nationally, they're body slamming UFC style, 70 year old, um, you know, white ladies. Um, it's not about uh, justice or law and order. It's about just respect. It's just about, you know, like mafia. We just want respect. How dare you look at me? How dare you use that tone of voice with me? Um, how dare you yell back? We're the ones that pick fights. We're the ones that yell. If you yell back, then we're going to beat the shit out of you, give you $28,000 unnecessary, uh, of unnecessary medical bills, and then we're going to, um, you know, not give a shit if you get robbed. We're not here to serve and protect you. We're just here to oppress and molest you. That's the Louisville police way, okay? So, it's, um... Uh, quick, two other things, side notes about Kentucky. The jo uh, a judge finds Kentucky cabinet $756,000 for mocking uh, the mockery of state open records act. So there's an open records act that everybody has to disclose. If there's a, uh, you know, if there's an open or freedom of information act filed, you have to show what's going on. Current Journal and Lexington Herald leader. So this is in the media um, is sticking, you know, uh, uh, sticking it to the powerful. So the Franklin Circuit Judge Philip Shepard ruled in favor of the Herald Leader and the Courier Journal. They checked into the Cabinet for Health and Family Services uh, for 180 files involving social workers' interactions with children who had died or suffered near fatal injuries. Uh, Kentucky is number one for child deaths and child abuse cases. And so from those statistics and from that uh, information, they want to find out more about it, but it turns out that our social services didn't have access to that information. They tried to hide that information. Um, they weren't forthcoming for it, so basically they said they made a mockery of it. They made a mockery of the Open Records Act. And, you know, instead of, and that's crazy. I mean, shit, you're fucking taking care of our goddamn kids. These kids are fucking dying, and you're not allowing to see why these kids have died. You know, at the very least, let them live on, even if it's, you know, um, uh, to prevent other people from doing the same thing. Like, you're not honoring their fucking legacy by keeping it buried. You honor a person's legacy who died unnecessarily by making sure nobody else dies unnecessarily. And you do that by finding out as much information about the thing as possible. So, there is that. That's, you know, that's actually a bit of good news. Here's some bit of bad news. In Kentucky, number of AIDS... Uh, of HIV and AIDS cases are rising and the health officials are blaming the ignorance. So uh, the AIDS and HIV rates here in Kentucky are rising. So that's, you know, that's watch out for that. Um, yeah, okay, so Lugo police, they are, they are obnoxiously criminal. And they're, uh, the, it's a police state, it's a totalitarian system, it's a dictatorship, it's an autocratic dictatorship, and they're a rogue mil military force, especially the Viper Squad. The Viper Squad is supposed to prevent violence, they're supposed to be helping people. They don't, they're starting the violence, they're the ones starting the fights. They've, been start, they've probably been starting the fights since the very beginning, too. They're the oppressors, and they're the ones, by example, they lead how everybody else is supposed to behave. And if they're that insecure that they, if they aren't going after crimes, they're just going after people who disrespect them. Disrespect could be interpreted in so many ways. I mean, my God, if that's all that it's you know, about, not about enforcing the law, but just about enforcing whatever you feel like is. I mean, there's a Louisville police officer that was at uh, a bar, and he's un off the clock and somebody was talking to his woman all of a sudden he pulls a badge out and then the guy says well, what's that mean and then the guy just starts attacking him and then he gets that case is knocked off so I mean that's the type of bullshit they're off duty and they're allowed to beat up anybody whoever they want to and um, and there's many cases like that that's not the only one we're gonna start with the most heinous ones, okay? When you, it seems like the national media, people don't give a shit until somebody dies, and then when there's a murder, then it's like, oh, I'll take a look at this. But when there's a shit ton of murders, uh, you, you that you know about, you, you also, I mean, you have to 
of course there's going to be other shit, smaller shit that you don't see that people aren't noticing that aren't being reported. Uh, in fact, there's several uh, homicides uh, by the LMPD that have not been reported. They've not been, uh, you know, uh, before it seems like there's a, a movement for each one of these bad incidents, uh, but recently in the last five or so years, there's nothing. So let's let's begin. Um, March 13th, 1997, you had a man named Robert Whitlow who was some machine gunned down by white male uh, Louisville police officer Rodney J. Estes, and he murdered 45-year-old black male Robert Whitlow with a machine gun. Fucking duh, 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 duh. machine gunned him down. May 13, 1997. So uh, uh, a retired Jefferson County police major agreed to testify on behalf of the state of a man suing Louisville police for excessive force, violating his civil rights. There, so there's a man, a police officer, who's coming to testify on behalf of Robert Whitlow, the man who's dead. So Charles Topp, he's a former county SWAT commander, so he used to work on the SWAT team. And he says that the uh, um, a police SWAT team member that killed Robert Whitlow two years ago, let's see, while trying to serve a arrest warrant was unnecessarily confrontational and used excessive tactics. So a SWAT guy is pointing out another SWAT guy and saying you used aggressive tactics, it was too much. Robert Whitlow died when Detective Rodney J. Estes shot him twice with a submachine gun. And uh, Rodney J. Estes claims that Robert Whitlow uh, was wanted for allegedly beating his girlfriend and was holding her hostage for six days, pointing a pistol at him. In response to the lawsuit, Louisville police claimed that Whitlow died as a result of his own intentional misconduct on March 13, 1997. So a lot of times with the police, uh, people are just backing the police no matter what they say. Any type of piece of evidence, you know, that's enough. That's all it takes. Um, why did you know Zimmerman murder Trayvon Martin? Oh, there's some reason. That, no, no explanation. No further explanation is needed. Any shred. And you know what? It's bullshit because when you have one person who's alive and one person who's dead, you only have one witness testimony. You only have one set of eyes, and of course they're going to be biased on their own perspective. So, um, yeah. So you have. Um, so you don't ever get the full story. You get theirs, and then they can just make up something. Yeah, he had a gun. He pointed at me. They planted, uh, police planted a butcher knife on this old man. They go into a nursing home and kill a 95-year-old man, shoot him in the stomach with beanbags. He's dead. 95-year-old man in a nursing home, veteran of the United States. They shoot him in the stomach. He dies of internal bleedings. Then all of a sudden, he's got a butcher knife in his hand. He never owned a butcher knife. Never had a butcher knife in the world. Then all of a sudden he's got a butcher knife. And they said that he tried to attack the police. And therefore that's why they killed him. A 95 year old man. So um, the, uh, the lawsuit eventually was settled in March 1998. A year later in U.S. District Court. It seeks damages for the pain and suffering of uh, Rod, uh, Rod, Robert Whitlow. Experience and for the wages he could have lived, they said the amount is about 530 to 630 thousand. Robert Whitlow was unemployed but applying for a job with the county corrections. And you have Charles Top claims in court records that the police violated their own policies and procedures when they invaded Robert Whitlow's home. Court records also show that Robert Whitlow's pistol wasn't loaded, and some of the neighbors cast doubt on the girlfriend's story uh, that he held her against her will. Magistrate order has ordered the two sides to meet next month to work out a settlement. So evidently, they, the, the judge thought there was something to, to the case uh, for them to be able to work it out. And you'll see this pop up again and again. You'll see all these possible reasons for why it seems like you know, they might have been able to get away with it, but their stories don't make any sense. They're contradicting each other. And then there's a settlement, big cover-up, big hush, shut the fuck up. Nobody talks about it anymore. Nobody gets fired. Nobody gives a shit. Somebody got paid. Let's just keep on going. Um... We're going to have this again, January 6th, 1998. You have Rodney Abernathy, okay? So we already got Robert, Robert Whitlow, and now we have Robert Abernathy. So the LMPD murdered Robert Abernathy. They murdered Robert Abernathy um, with 15 shots by Louisville cops. He was uh, murdered at Chickasaw Park at 3 a.m. after dark. Rodney Abernathy was unarmed and unharmed until four psychopaths pulled at Timothy Barnes. After dark at 3 a.m. Chickasaw Park, Rodney Abernathy was murdered by Maurice Hendricks, Fred Helm, and Derek Leachman. And remember Derek Leachman because you're going to hear this name again and again. These three, three cops shot, but for some reason Willie Williams, a fourth LMPD officer on the scene, didn't shoot. He didn't kill him. 
and he didn't shoot because uh, or tell the truth, but it's no surprise because you know the fuck up covered up his buddy's homicides with Uncle Tom lies. Uh, three days later, January 9th, 1998, the city of Louisville settled the lawsuit agreeing to pay six hundred thousand dollars to the family of Rodney Abernathy. So they murder Rodney Abernathy in the fucking park. Three days later, they fucking write a check out for six hundred thousand dollars. So just shut the fuck up. Let's not point this out. Let's not make a big hurrah to do about this. Take your money and just walk away. After they paid $600,000, the four Louisville police officers agreed to pay $600,000 to the family of Rodney Abernathy. The four Louisville police officers involved in the altercation that ended in the fatal shooting of Rodney Abernathy in Chickasaw Park last June will not face criminal charges. So that means once you got paid six hundred thousand dollars, they wanted to sweep the shit underneath the carpet, and uh, and none of the police officers that murdered this guy was charged for anything. They got charged for nothing. So uh, you have basically criminals, murderers, who's you know just killing people out in the streets, and they get they get away with it. They get away with this shit. Uh, and, and that's because a Jefferson grand jury decided yesterday that he, they weren't going to face criminal charges. Well, how does a grand jury decide these things? Well, a grand jury is just a jury of your peers. It's 12 people, just 12 citizens, um, that decide whether or not there's enough evidence to carry on with the jury trial. The grand jury isn't the end-all, solve-all to all the solutions. It's just uh, one part of the process. Once there's an indictment, then there's a jury trial. So the indictment is just to say that there's enough evidence that a crime took place. Well, you got a dead man. There's a dead person. You got a dead body. How is that, you know, not enough probable cause that a crime took place? That's plenty of, you know, uh, of justification. Typically, how the grand jury is swayed is that they're swayed by the prosecutors. As prosecutors have undue amount of influence on the grand jury and so they could get the grand jury to go one way or another way and evidently they was able to get the grand jury to not uh, you know uh, uh, indict any of these police officers who murdered this guy they did pay six hundred thousand dollars a half a million, over half a million dollars to the family so evidently they you know there is some culpability of guilt you have uh, so so the the actual incident of what happened so you have uh, four Louisville police officers, okay, in Chickasaw Park, Rodney Abernathy. They fired 24 rounds, and according to the testimony presented during a cor coroner's inquest in September, um, so a, coroner, a coroner's report, a coroner took a look at it, and they found that there's 24 rounds of a shot, okay? You only need one shot to kill a person. Why do you need to shoot 24 times? Louisville Police Sergeant Michael Vito, who handled the department's homicide investigation, testified that all the officers but Williams fired shots. So that's another thing. I mean, if they're, they're all scared of their lives and they're afraid, why didn't all of them shoot? You know, three of them shoot, but one of them didn't. So evidently one of them didn't feel, you know, the, the threat as, um, as, present, uh, as pressing as the other ones. So Louisville Police Sergeant Michael Vito handled the department's homicide investigation, testified all of them shot but one. Helm fired the last shot, which is believed to be the one that hit Abernathy in the head, causing his death. So the one who actually killed him was, was uh, Helm. The guy's, guy's name was Helm. Fred Helm. Fred Helm was the one that shot the kill shot. So Fred Helm's the one that shot him in the head. Um, you're supposed to shoot to stop the threat. You're not supposed to shoot to kill. You're just supposed to shot the, shoot the person to stop the forward momentum, you know, to stop the, the threat. That's all. You're not trying to murder the person. You're just supposed to stop the threat. That's, that's cop talk, um, but that's what the cops are supposed to be doing. So uh, Helm, Fred Helm is the one who shot the guy. He hit Abernathy in the head. Then you had Derek Leachman in a taped interview said that he fired two to five shots at Abernathy, but that Abernathy, who was six foot one inch tall, 214 pounds, charged again. So you know, Leachman says he shot him, you know, five times, but he keeps on charging and he just can't stop him. And then Leachman said he fired another 15 to 20 times. 15 to 20 times, you're telling me this guy just keeps on charging after he's got 20-something bullets lodged inside of him? He's got 20-something bullets and he just keeps on getting fired upon and just keeps on going forward? I mean, we saw JFK, his head just gets blown off, just gets blown away. He goes back and to the left. Because that's the direction the body goes when you have force. Um, it's simple physics. You have, you know, a bullet's tiny, but it's got a lot of velocity. There's a lot of energy that's backing with that bullet. So, you know, they shoot them, you know, 20 times, you know, over two dozen times. 
Um, that's, that was uh, according to the testimony presented to a coroner's inquest. The coroner's inquest actually turned to be more accurate than the police did, uh, than the police's, uh, the aftermath of all the rest of it, because there was no other investigation. There was no jury trial or anything else. Um, but that's Rodney Abernathy, 1998. More coming up.